Hello everyone! Today I want to show you how to work with mods in KSP as they are kind of a big deal and I have a content gap. I don't want to waste your time, so here you can see all the time codes for different topics I'm going to cover, and there also should be chapters in YouTube itself. However, I would still recommend watching through the entire thing, as I hope that even veteran players might find something new. So before you can go and install mods, you need to pick which ones you want. And this is kind of the most important part, because it's not as simple as just installing them all. Some mods are incompatible with each other, some require you to have a NASA supercomputer, and some are... well, let's just say they're above your pay grade. And just to make matters worse, we all have different preferences and different experience with the game. This is why I can't give you just a shopping list, but what I can do is help you find mods that might work for you. And to do that, we'll use the divide and conquer approach by splitting all the mods into several categories to help you narrow your choice. These categories aren't my invention, they're common throughout the modding community, and many websites can allow you to search for mods using these or similar categories. The first one is obviously the graphics mods. These don't change how the game plays, only how it looks. And if you're just starting your modding adventure, definitely go with these, as they're easy to try but can make a drastic difference to the feel of the game. One of the most common issues that KSP players face is a lack of interest in going further than Minmus. I mean, oh wow, it's yet another rock with a slightly different texture and maybe a different gravity. But mods like Parallax can make further destinations become much more interesting, giving you motivation to go beyond the Kerbin sphere of influence. And even at Kerbin, mods like Scatterer can make the game feel so much more pleasing. You can find more examples in my GitHub repo, and if you want, you can ask me to make a more detailed video about this or any other category. Just tell me in the comments. The second will be part mods. This is by far the largest category, with thousands of mods for you to choose from. But it's also a rather perilous category, as it's easy to download hundreds of parts and then just get lost in them. I recommend installing part mods only if you actually need them. For example, I really enjoyed the near future mods lineup, but you don't need it unless you're making frequent trips to very far destinations, or for some reason you need to make a trip to Duna in one month. Yes, Kerbalism, we'll get to you in due time. Or say colony mods, they're great for making permanent bases on other planets, but will you actually be doing that? Third on our list would be the quality of life mods. These come in many different shapes and sizes, ranging from simple mods that help you predict your landing in atmosphere to insane autopilot mods. I definitely urge you to try mods from this category, as they can make a lot of routines, such as getting to orbit, much simpler, or make landing your space plane so much easier. Next we come to the lesser known mods from a category named Mechanics. These usually add new gameplay elements, such as views from within cockpits or new resources. Sometimes they might change how already existing mechanics works, such as System Heat mod that changes the default heat system. Now on our list we have a rather simple category, just not very popular. Many people say that contracts in the core game are too repetitive, and that is absolutely correct. A way to solve this would be to install different contract packs that can help you to add more variety to your games. I recommend starting with Tourism Plus and Bases and Stations Reborn, but as usual there are many options for you to choose from. Nearing the deep waters, we have destination mods that add completely new planets, star systems, or even a black hole. If you want to visit these destinations, I highly recommend picking up a few engine mods that will give you the oomph to get to them. And definitely the better time warp mod, as trips to these places take decades and you don't want to wait an hour at the core game's max time warp. 
finally we reach the bottom, the realism mods. Now, many mods from categories above do make the game more realistic. I mean, technically almost all visual mods do. But I'm talking about mods that are focused on extreme realism. For starters, there's the Kerbalism mod, which makes deep space exploration much more dangerous, as your parts might fail, you need to track food, water and oxygen, and it's also the end for tiny spaceships, as Kerbals will go insane if they don't have company and comfortable living conditions. Oh, and it also completely reworks the science mechanics, forcing you to collect data over time. Then you've got the remote tech mod, which adds delay to your communication, so you have to plan commands in advance or use autopilots. And if all of this wasn't hard enough for you, there's the devil combo. which will turn KSP into a real-world simulation and will also cost you your sanity. Now, in my opinion, this category contains some of the most interesting mods, as while they do make KSP a much more challenging game, they also make it so much more rewarding. However, you should be very experienced, and I mean very experienced before you try them out, even then it'll take quite some time for you to master them. Now that you've found mods you want to try out, it's time to install them. The simplest way to install a mod is to use the Comprehensive Kerbal Archive Network, or CCAN, which is a mod management tool made specifically for KSP. Installing CCAN is quite trivial, you just have to press on the huge download button, scroll down to the download instructions, and get the respective file for your operating system. Then just follow the instructions. If you have any problems during this step, please refer to the comment section as I'd love to help you with any issues you might face. Once installed, you need to select your game folder and search for mods you want to install. To the right, you will see the name of the mod, its description, and other useful information. You can also check out its dependencies, contents, or versions if you want, but in most cases, all you will need is the link to the homepage where you can read more about the mod and maybe see some pictures or videos of it. When you finish shopping, it's time to press apply. You will be shown a list of all the mods to be installed, some will be mods you asked for, others will be the dependencies for these mods. Press clear if you want to cancel the changes, or ok if you want to continue. Sometimes mods will come with recommendations, and you will be asked if you want to install other recommended or supported mods. I usually don't install them, but this is your choice. After pressing OK, you will see the mods downloaded and installed. After that, just press play and you should have your personal modded KSP. When searching for that perfect combination of mods that you want, you might sometimes lose track of all the mods that you've installed. To help you keep track, CCAN has several instruments. First would be the install history, which allows you to see all of your changes and revert to a previous state in case you've screwed something up. Second is the ability to make copies of the game in case you want to try installing a mod that you fear might break something. And last but not least, you can make CCAN save files, which will record all mods and their versions, allowing you to share your mod packs with others. Obviously, you can find my mod packs in the GitHub repo, links in the description. Now, CCAN is a very powerful tool for managing your KSP mods, but it doesn't support all of them. To be fair, it supports like 99% of them, but in case you really want that one mod that isn't supported, you can try installing it manually. The manual installations are by definition not standard, but they usually follow this pattern. Step 1. Install all of the dependencies. In most cases, you can actually use CCAN to install dependencies or install them manually as well if you have to. In that case, don't forget to install dependencies of the dependencies of the dependencies and so on. Step 2. Download the mod files. This would usually be an archive containing either the mod folder itself or a game.data folder with the mod in it. Step 3. Take the mod folder and put it in the game.data folder of your KSP installation. And that's pretty much it. You can launch the game, but make sure to carefully read the instructions from the mod maker because in rare cases you might need to do some extra steps. So that's it for today. I hope that this video would help you go and try out mods that you've seen on YouTube for yourself as they make KSP so much more fun to play. 
thank you for watching till the end, and for those of you who are still here, I have a bit of a present. I want you to know that I'm currently working on a game, which is why there were some videos about Unreal Engine here and there. In case you want to find out more about it and influence the development, you can join the Discord server.